Good evening, and welcome to Ask the Unicorn. I'm Uhura Z, and this is Kazu. Hello, today is January 14th, 2015, and I believe this is episode 52? 55. 55. My goodness. Uh, okay, so, um, for those of you that are, have just tuned in to the show this, this time, I'm Uhura Z, and uh, the show is Ask the Unicorn. This is a show uh, about metaphysics, paranormality, uh, mysticism, and spirituality. And basically, I answer all questions that have to do with those four categories. However, there are two questions that I do not answer under any circumstances. That is whether or not someone's going to die and whether or not someone is cheating. Those questions are unfair. Besides those, I will answer any of your questions. Now, um, I don't have any yet. it's okay. Uh, I'm hoping to get some questions this evening. It looks like uh, our, our people in the chat room are a little slow this evening, but they'll get there. Uh, before we get into that, I again like to talk about film and independent film at the beginning of the show. Um, there are a lot of independent filmmakers that are out there trying to give you wonderful entertainment. We had one here last week, and that was uh, Paco Seth Roberts. Thank you very much for coming in uh, last week. Seth, people learned a lot, and it was a great show. Mm -hmm. um, we will have more people that are involved in independent film in the future. Uh, even myself, uh, I'll have me as a guest on. What? How does that make sense? <laughs> and I will talk about Falkir, uh, which we are uh, in the midst of filming, and uh, it's coming along rather nicely. Um, Winter interrupts certain things, but we'll get back on track soon enough and get it finished. Um, now, that being said, try to support your local filmmakers. There are a lot of wonderful people out there that are doing film. As we talked about before, there's uh, Seth Roberts, there's Alan Dillingham, there is Kevin DeBacco, there's Bill McLean, there is uh, uh, Gary Halger, and a lot of other filmmakers that are out there really trying to bring to you some wonderful entertainment. As I've always said, we don't have Hollywood's money, but we do have ten times the talent and the drive. And you know, when you're broke, you kind of get creative, and we're extremely creative. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if you can, uh, the next time you're out spending 40 or 50 dollars on uh, a film that is basically really shiny but has a crappy story, think about it the next time so that you'll say, well, I'm going to back one of my local film, independent filmmakers and see how I can help them give me some different entertainment so we're not watching Spider-Man 17. Okay. Or Gone with the Wind and came back and went again. You know, just, just a lot. <laughs> okay, anyway. We have a caller online. That's fine. Okay. Let us move in. Uh, move on and uh, get on with the show. So if you have any questions, the unicorn is in. Ask away. We so what's going on? Uh, we have Elise on the phone. Okay. And uh, that's it. Okay, we'll that's enter. It. Okay. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi, Hi. Elise. Hey, Elise. Um, I have a question Certainly. about um, Planet X. Um, predicted for August 2015 and I was wondering what you thought about it. I think of the same thing about it that I thought the last time that it was supposed to come and uh, you know the universe isn't as predictable as we like to believe that it is neither is our solar system and uh, you know you know I I have known about Nibiru for quite some time okay and as people say it in some of the movies that I've seen it Nibiru as an incorrect pronunciation, but hey, who am I, right? Um, uh, I think that is a very viable and a real, real uh, entity, and I do think that it will be heading very close to us. However, there are a lot of people out there that are constantly trying to destroy the Earth in one way or another, and even if it was going to destroy the Earth, that just destroy the Earth. Uh, <laughs> Relieve it of its artifact. I can't do that accent. I suck at that accent. Do um, you think it'll be dangerous for people? Um, you know, I think that we're already, I really think that we're already dangerous, at least, seriously. I mean, have you looked at the state of our country and our world lately? People have just gone bug nuts. You know, and granted, 
there are a lot of things that are happening that are helping people to go bug nuts. Like all you have to do is look up at the sky in a nice, bright, and clear day, and some moron is up there spraying all God knows what across the sky and claiming that it, no, they're just contrails. Like we're really that stupid, you know. But the fact is, is that I believe that that is causing people to act abhorrently. And um, if Nibiru was on our way to the Earth on its way to the earth, it would explain a lot of things, you know. Uh, I, I oftentimes get the feeling that those that are the powers that be are hiding things from us. And I do believe that if there was a, a, an event like Nibiru coming close to us, that would cause a lot of cataclysm. However, for some odd reason, we are being kept in the dark about it. So I look at it this way, this earth is going to be here, okay, it just is. Whether or not we are going to be here is a whole different subject. But this earth is constantly destroying and recreating itself all the time. You know, that brings me to that whole global warming thing, you know, where uh, the scientists decided to all get on this bandwagon about global warming and they are all liars. This earth has a habit of warming and cooling. This is just how it recycles itself. And basically when you hear things like, well, we're, we're chemtrailing so that we can block the rays of the sun and keep the uh, greenhouse effect from happening. That's a lie. <laughs> That's just a bald-faced stupid lie. I know what they're doing. They're going off of the premise of how Venus is, but the fact that Venus is always covered by clouds and potentially reflecting the rays of the sun is what causes it to have that greenhouse effect. So basically, they're lying to us. They're telling us they're getting rid of the greenhouse effect, but they're not. They're really causing it. Just so you know, as basic physics. Okay. You know, so as far as Nibiru goes, uh, do I see Nibiru bumping into the earth and causing all this massive destruction? No. There may be some other entities that could crash into this earth because there's been so many celestial bodies that have come shockingly close to us. And of course... NASA, like other people, have just kept it away from us <laughs> because they don't know how we're going to act. And sometimes I blame them, sometimes I don't. If you look at how stupid we're being at the moment, I don't blame them. We're pretty much showing them that we're irresponsible children. You know, if we decide to act responsibly and start preparing for such an event, that's a whole different ballpark. Why, why are people not stocking food? Why are people not... Uh, stocking supplies? Why are people not trying to at least get along with each other so that we know that we can depend on each other in the event of a catastrophe? Do you, do you hear what I'm saying, Elise? I'm, I'm sorry, there's a bad connection on the phone, so... Um... I have to hold up, so... Okay, well, here, I'm going to hold the phone a little closer. Can you hear me now, sweetie? I can hear you now. Um... Okay. I just wondered about when the brown dwarf of Niboro comes close to the earth, they said there's going to be, um, I, I looked up something called two suns in the sky dot com, and they talked about how the, it would be, um, the brown dwarf of Niboro was coming in our, um, in our zone, it's called the kill zone, and it will cause a lot of radiation and a lot of people will be killed, and I was just worried about that. Well, honey, don't worry about it. You're a prayer warrior, remember? Yeah, well, I was thinking, if, um, we, I, I prayed uh, in, on, in December of 2012 that the asteroid wouldn't hit the Earth, and a lot of people prayed with me, I know you were praying, mm -hmm. and it didn't hit. So, I'm um, just praying that, I'm praying that um, this, this um, kind of event that, God will take over and nothing will happen to people. That's a good prayer to have. As a matter of fact, I would recommend that you do exactly that. It's only a celestial body, if anything. Well, I thought God created the whole world, so why can't God do something with this? Well, you know. well true, but you, you have to understand something. Even the design of this solar system and the design of the galaxy and the universe is not that random, although there are many groups that will, would have you think that it's that random. You know, I think that it's all in order, and that's the way that I'm going to choose to see it. Now, taking into consideration what Nibiru is, I do think that we're eventually, eventually, 
going to meet <laughs> and meet face to face and that's just the truth of it however every year someone comes up with a doomsday prophecy every single flipping year What's yes, that? Yes. okay this one is never is going to crash into the earth again again yeah hmm. it was supposed to like last year yeah I thought it was the late year before hmm. in 2012 too but you know you gotta stay above that at least you know you can't listen to people like that they, they like causing you know paranoia and hysteria when you can look up into the sky and see a basketball shaped planet or a sized planet in the sky then you have something to be concerned about oh okay do you understand <laughs> up until that time i think we're good I really do. Now, the sun is acting rather strange. That's one thing that concerns me. What's the sun doing? Well, the sun is shooting out all of these flares. Again? You know, yeah, again. And um, it's amazing that that's not the topic of news. You know, instead, the topic of news is that someone got new plastic surgery. I, I don't get it. You know. I mean, I look at all of the tragedies that are happening and all of the things that are happening, like the whole um, thing that happened in France. I was pretty much beside myself and just well, what can you do shake your head and think about the fact that there are people that are actually insane enough to decide that taking life is okay I look at all of the things that are happening you know with uh, people and police all around you know all around this country I don't get that at all it, it makes no sense it just doesn't. Police kill people, people kill police, and there seems to be this this war that is so unnecessary. I I just don't get it. I don't get it. You know, and I don't want to get it. I don't want any part of it. You know, I've, if you can attribute that to uh, <coughs> Nibiru, then I'll say, yeah, definitely Nibiru is affecting us, but I like to keep a positive outlook and okay. think that, uh, you know, those who created the universe are really smart enough to make contingencies for such things. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I don't understand. You know, so do your prayers, at least. Remember, God is bigger than everything. Yeah, that's true. I believe that. Yeah. You know, and so is God. Is, you know, just talk to one of them and say, hey, could you kind of move this thing a little bit? So I, I, you know, a planet crashing into another planet can ruin your whole millennium. <laughs> you know? I've been praying that, um, that God moves that whole liberal solar system to somewhere else where it's not going to hurt anyone. Yeah. Let's just hope that it happens exactly that way. And like, like I said, if you look up in the sky and see, you know, this giant celestial body heading right for us, okay, then we might have to have something to be concerned about. But I believe that this earth will carry on. Okay. Okay? Thanks. So yeah. keep your head up and try not to, you know, read so many of those articles. There's a lot of doomsayers that are out there. If it wasn't that, it would have been Ebola, because Ebola was, you know, oh, supposed to be the big next scare, well, it didn't scare people enough, oh. so... You know, try to try to stay out of those things, okay? Okay, thank you. Right. I think I'll call you another time. Um, okay, no problem. I always love talking to you. Okay, thanks. See you, sweetie. Okay, I love you. Uh-oh. That was Elise. I love talking to Elise. Okay, so... Uh, we have a few shout-outs. What do you got? Ron, St. Hilaire, and Seth, say hi. Hey. Hello, guys. Um, Vasu and Kayla are also on. Hello. Hi. Vasu asks a question. Certainly. She says, Hi, Ahura. I have a question about spiritual teachers. I'm going to meet a girl. She has lots of abilities. How do I determine if she's the appropriate teacher? Well, you're asking one teacher to determine whether or not another teacher is proper for you. Um, you know my dynamic. You know, I know that a lot of people disagree with my dy the, dy the dynamic that I see. You'll know your teacher, okay? It's just the way that it is. 
you would know your teacher even before you went to see this person. You know, you could only, one can only determine whether or not someone is proper to be their teacher by being there and seeing and experiencing. You know, there are people who go all around the world searching for their teacher when their teacher could be right in front of them. But there are stigmas that we have to get past. You know, my teacher was a woman, and my teacher was a very powerful woman, and um, she made sure that I am capable of teaching today. I knew that. I saw someone that was superior to me. And I needed to be like she was. So, my search didn't carry me that far. You have to determine, are you, have you already been speaking to your teacher? And you just didn't accept it. Or are you just looking for a teacher that looks like something? Or is convenient? My teacher was not convenient. <laughs> She was my teacher. So you're going to have to determine that for yourself. That's one of those things as a teacher that I would never interfere with. Just be alert. Ask questions. And then listen. Real simple. And then when you discover that you found a teacher, what? Do what you have to do. Do what you have to do to be there. Okay? That's up to you. Hope that helps. What else have you got? Anything? Mm-mm. Mm-mm? Karen Rideout says, good evening. Good evening. Hello, Karen Rideout. And how are you this evening? Thank you for joining us. Mm. Now... I will address something that I, that has come across, you know, my attention. That has come to my attention. A lot of people have been voicing how down they've been feeling, you know, or, or how empty or how unsatisfied they've been feeling. You know, this happens every year, every single year, every year after Christmas. The next month, people go through kind of a a lull in their consciousness and in their activities. You know, you just got to hold on a bit. I know that things can seem hard and, and basically you're all feeling the effects of what's going on in our world. You have to learn to batten down the hatches. Okay, you've got to learn to to look for better things. Whenever I got down and I felt as though everything was troubling, I'd always remember something that my teacher said. She used to say that. She used to look at me and say, hang on. Better things are coming. And you know, I, I get it. When you're in the midst of going through some trouble, you don't really think about better things. You just want to get the trouble over with. You just want it to go away. You know, and to hear someone say better things are coming could be exactly what you need to hear. Or maybe not. But I can only tell you that if you really look at things, you go through something similar every single year. It's almost like you hit the reset button and you have to go through this tiny bit of turbulence before you get to the clear air. Hang on. Okay? Don't allow all of the turbulence that is going on in this world to affect you. Or at least get the best of you. Stay away from things such as, you know, racism, sexism, bullying people's agendas, you know, politics if you can. Stay the heck away from that stuff. You know, the, the, the prime objective of a politician is to deceive you. Do you know that? If you look in the dictionary, you'll find it's someone who, a politician is someone who uses deceit in order to sway people to their side or their agenda. And that's just the truth. So, to me, politics means deceit. You know, so try to stay out of that if you really don't want to you know, muddle up your way. And also, I, I, I have taken to saying this constantly. We are in the year 2015. That is 2015 AD. You know, that means that we should 
have progressed in a lot of ways of thinking and a lot of ways of carrying on with each other. This is not 1940. Okay? Not there. Not there. Okay? Not the 60s. Okay? A lot of the values of back then were wrong. But now, hopefully, we can see that they're wrong. It does not. It, I'll say this again, and I'll say it really clearly so that we all get it. It does not matter what color a person's skin is. That's the most ridiculous thing in the world to sit up and, and focus on what color someone's skin is. To determine whether or not you're going to accept them. Utterly ridiculous. If you are out someplace and you see someone whose skin is a different color from yours or darker than yours or lighter than yours, you do not refer to that person as African American or European American or China American or Japan American or, or Middle Eastern American or Arab American. You know what you do? You refer to that person as an American if they are American and that's the bottom line. Okay? I have friends. I have lots of friends. And they are of all different nationalities. And I refuse <laughs> to refer to them as, you know, my Chinese friend or my black friend or my white friend or, or whatever. It is time that we have progressed. So if you are around someone that decides that they, they need to segregate people you need to get away from that person if you and another thing if you're around someone that decides that women are second class or that you know or even if you're around women that think that they're better than men or that men are better than women you need to get away from those persons they're a poison first off there is no way no not ever going to happen in my consciousness that i'm going to believe that women are better than me no by the same token i do not, in my consciousness, ever believe that I am better than women. I'm better than Kazi. Huh? Especially in video games. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> okay. We need to cut that stuff, okay? On one side, you got all these men that are treating women like dirt. And on the other side, you got all these women that are treating men like dirt. And it's absolutely, it's absolutely stupid. I need a new word. It is absolutely stupid. What's your new word? Absolutely. I said something. And we need to quit. Seriously. We need to get with each other. And we need to understand that we need each other in order to survive. Of all shades. Seriously, we need everyone. We need to be able to see from different perspectives. And we can't do that as long as we're separating each other. So if you know a sep separatist or a sexist, get away from those people. Let them know that racism is not allowed. And if they choose to say racist things, tell them they are not welcome in your home or in your life. I don't care what you got to do. Because those people will turn on you. And they will bully you. So. As far as Unicorn Cove is, is concerned. Race, this is a no racism zone. No bullying zone. This is a no sexism zone. And if you're an extraterrestrial. Come visit me. I'll make you some bread. By the way. I have a, a project going on. An Indiegogo project. Indiegogo project and it is for daily bread salt free bakery it says low sodium but what I meant was salt free because I don't use any added salt in any of my bread I'm very good at what I do and if you can go in and, and check out the uh, the link which I have on Facebook and uh, if you can donate to this cause. I need to raise a lot of money so that I can open this bakery. Now, if I open this bakery, and I'm, I'm thinking that I will, um, not only will I be able to uh, bake bread and provide baked goods for people with special diets because I don't add any salt and I make sure that I'm using organic products and making sure that I use fresh products. And uh, 
I also consider those that have a gluten problem, you know, so I am working with uh, gluten-free as well <coughs> as uh, organic <coughs> flour. Bless you. I also have a new flour that is called einkorn flour, which is awesome, okay? And uh, I can also donate a portion of the bread every single week to uh, local food pantries and uh, homeless shelters. One of the worst feelings that you could possibly have is to be really, really hungry, yet have no prospect of eating. That's ridiculous. You know, bread is made of just a few simple things. And when I figured those things out, I asked myself a question. Why the hell is there hunger here in the United States when it's so simple to feed people? It's so simple to make things for people to eat. Why are we tolerating hunger? Why are we paying some people $40 million, yet all around them there is starvation and hunger? It makes no sense to me. Listen, and I say on this, I can't, I can't end world hunger all by myself. I can't. But I can at least end it where I am. In other words, if you back and support me and tell your friends to support this project, I will. I will donate a portion of, of uh, uh, bread to uh, local food pantries and homeless shelters. Not only that, I've decided that if I open this bakery, I'm going to spend one day a month giving away free bread to people that need it. One day a month. I think that that's good. I can end it that way. See, I have food issues. <laughs> you know, I've had food issues because I was starved as a kid. Literally starved as a kid. So. I'm looking to feed people. I'm always looking to feed people. You know, if you come to my house, you're going to get fed. And if you don't like it, then they'll come to my house. <laughs> and that's just the truth. So please back my project. Now, moving on. Any other questions? Yes. Barbara Flag says hi. 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 And oh, by the way, it's Daily Bread Low Sodium Bakery. If you check on Facebook, on my profile, or is it Deliza profile, you'll see it there. And we'll put it up in other places. Or you can just go to Indiegogo and look up Daily Bread Low Sodium Bakery. And that will be me. Please, donate to this cause. Okay? Yes, today he made sweet potato bread. Mm -hmm. And he made uh, a bunch of other stuff. Blueberry <laughs> pie. You be baking like three things a day. So it's well, I, I made, blueberry uh, pie. And then... The other one was uh, with... Uh, Couscous garlic. Uh, organic artesian bread flour. Yes. And it was uh, couscous and garlic uh, bread. Mm -hmm. Couscous garlic bread. That was really very good. good. Yesterday I made a tea bread, which was peppermint and fennel. fennel. You know, so, and I made a blueberry pie. All of which is gone. It's all organic, right? You used organic yep. stuff? Yeah, I did indeed. It's Icorn flour is really good. Yeah, it is. So, uh, please, back this project. Tell your friends. Tell everybody. Yeah. You know, I always say this about Facebook, is that people will get on and say, oh, I like this all the time, and I like this all the time. You can talk to them ahead of time and say, well, if I do this, will you back and support me? And they say, yes, I will. Will you donate to this project? They say, yes, I will. But then when you open the project, not everyone who said that they would will. Come on, do something. Help me out here. Okay. Anything? Barbara Flax says hi. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Barbara. How are you? We have a few things here. What do you got? Vasu says, in regards to answering her question about a spiritual teacher, she said, thanks, thank you, that definitely helps. Good. Karen right out says, in response to our question of how are you, she says, pretty good. Um, having the brain surgery on the 20th, I know you can't tell me how it will go, but I'm looking for inspiration, I guess. As far as I'm Maybe concerned, you'll be fine. You will be alright. You will be good. Okay? That's all you know. That is all you know. It will work. Things will be done the way that they need to be done. That's all you know. And that is all I know. You will be fine. That is all you need to be concerned with. Okay? Afterwards, if you need to speak to me, I will be available to you. Hope that helps you. Take care.
this into consideration. I know where you are. And I know what you're feeling. Please try to hang in there. Okay? You're not alone. I can promise you that. You are not alone. And many are looking out for you. And they will be there for you when you need them. Okay. Hope that helps you. We should send her the prayer and everything. Thank you. Fine. Okay. Next, we have another question from Vasu. She says, one more question. I've been looking up some Middle Eastern metaphysical information. What is your opinion on jinns? <laughs> <laughs> snark, snark, snark. My opinion on jinns is that they are real. They are real. They are not lightweight. And they are not to be toyed with. How about that? They're old. They know much. And if you don't have to deal with one in a certain capacity, you do not. However, they've gotten a bad rap. They're not bad. They just are. That's what I think of them. That's my take on them. Are they really assigned to household vessels? Sometimes. I wondered how much of that Magi anime was true. <laughs> anime? <laughs> Sometimes they're assigned to a person. Other times they're just assigned to a land. Other times they don't have an assignment. Their existence is dimensional. Ours is dimensional, but theirs is dimensional. And it there's some dimensions they are not allowed into. There are some dimensions that they are allowed into, but then there are certain dimensions that we are not allowed into. It's rare when you encounter a full gen. Most times you only encounter a demi gen, if that's a term, partial gen, partial. But in truth, to ask such things, you'd have to know what a jinn was about. Most people would not know a jinn, ever, even though they think they might. So why are they associated with rubbing the lamp? I'm not going to talk to you about anime. <laughs> Karen right out says, thank you. I do feel like I have guides around me. I really feel it. You do. That I can promise you. And they will take care of you. She asked me about the genie and the lamp. Are you serious? Yes. Why do they have that <laughs> stereotype? I'm serious. It's because someone made that up. Okay. They are associated with an object. And an many ob times yes. an object that which needs energy to activate. That's a long story. That, okay, that I get. If they got... not necessarily chained to that object, but bound to that object. You get the object, you get the gem. Okay. That's my take on them, Basu. <laughs> <laughs> I know a lot about gems, believe me. Mm -hmm. But uh, <clears throat> that takes a long time to explain all of the dynamics. When you're seriously willing to listen and learn about it, let me know. Uh, Which brings about another question. Okay. Which brings about another point. I have another question. Those of you that are seeking training in the areas of metaphysics or spirituality or mysticism or paranormality, I do teach classes and I teach them via Skype and in person. I do not teach, however, for free. Uh, this is my livelihood. If you'd like to take lessons, 
Fine. I provide this particular forum to kind of give you the opportunity to learn some things. So you might call this my pro bono, if you will. You know, but uh, if you really want to learn some things, let's get about it. I teach classes. I'll give you six weeks of classes, two classes a week, one hour each class, and it will be worth it. You'll learn some things and be able to apply them. If you have questions about class, we can be reached at uh, www.asktheunicorn.com and also www.unicorn-cove.com. You can also reach us at area code 207-347-5686. And I will be more than willing to give you information on Jen. You might not be able to do a lot with that type of information, not unless you have run across it yet. She says, interesting, I'm going to read up about it more. I feel the idea comes from Egypt for some reason. Yes, it does. <clears throat> Only one aspect of it, though. There are gen all over the world. In the world. Good. You're on the right track, though. Okay, what else did you got? Uh, Barbara Flags says, just a shout out to the, your radio show. show. Thank you for your time and inspiration. Thank you so very much. Awesome. Thank you for uh, joining us. And then we have uh, Natalia Casanueva. Hi. They ask. Greetings. I want. I went to take a nap, and four hours later, it felt like I had only been laying there in the dark. I was still tired. I'm not sure if I was ever asleep. Is there an explanation? Sometimes it's because of your your dreams, your dream state. You could have been doing a lot in your dream state, and other times you really just didn't rest. You just kind of crashed, and that usually usually means that you're not doing enough with the physical act uh, with your physical energy. So there's a lot that's left over, and you just kind of keep going, you know, and you wind up just totally exhausting yourself. Other times it could be because you're doing way too much. Uh, in your case, however, I think it has to do with um, uh, not getting the proper rest that you need. That's, that's all it is. It's nothing serious. Uh, it, it means that you're pretty active in your mind even when you sleep. You need to probably step away from something so that you can de-stress and then you'll get the proper rest and you'll be better. So if there's a, something going on right now that is causing you undue stress, my suggestion is for you to back up, back away from it for a minute, okay? Until you can recharge. Hope that helps you. Cool. And what else have you got? Michelle Ayat. Hi. Hi. She says, hello. I was giving a book what? I was giving a book on meat given a book on meat given a book on meat M-E-E-T and work with your oh okay. uh, meat and work with your guides yeah, I was giving a book on meat and work with your guides by Ted Andrews I was reading oh Ted Andrews I was reading it and came upon a part on balancing your aura once reading things happened to my surroundings Okay. Um, I don't know if there's more to that question. Yeah, there wasn't a question. <laughs> I don't know if there's... Is there more to... Is there an actual question? Or is it just a report? Oh, should I continue reading or should I wait for my classes? The book advised saying it three times, but I just had... Why don't you wait a minute, words, okay? Effect, I think. Yeah, why don't you wait until we can actually, you know, talk about it. And I'd be more than willing to read it with you. Okay. This uh, brings about a point. A lot of times you'll get uh, books that tell you to try things. You really have to be careful <laughs> with what you're following, okay? Uh, you don't know where it'll lead you. Okay, just cool your jets. You know, this is what got people in trouble with Ouija boards. They just decided to to do a bunch of things uh, out of pure curiosity or, or just wanting to know some things and wound up being in trouble. So 
I'll tell you this, if the book feels strange to you, if there's something that is in the book that feels strange to you, just back away from it, okay? If it doesn't feel strange, just read it. Don't try anything. Just, you know, read it. You have to be adventuresome. At the same time, you have to be cautious, okay? And we'll talk about it when we resume. Cool. Um, that's it for now. Awesome. I love answering these questions. But you guys have got to come up with some more depth, you know, give me the opportunity to actually give you some deep things. I, that was a good question about the gin, about gin. However, that's a long explanation. <laughs> uh, the gin are definitely special beings and have infiltrated mankind for centuries, millennia, I guess, millennia, thousands, years. yeah. Thousands and thousands, thousands, and of, thousands, thousands of, years. of years. You know, very powerful they are. Hmm? <laughs> Cold. <laughs> All right, then. Um, if you have any other questions, please feel free to ask them. I am here and at your service. Okay. Anything else? No. Nope. nope. Oh. oh, Michelle says, yes, I did stop reading it and wanted to ask you. Yeah. Good idea. And uh, we'll just talk about it when we have the time. And that is Hiroshi. Why is he barking? Because he's hanging out with Tate. Yeah. And he hears me. Good. Why don't you go tell Tate to keep him quiet? She, she's trying. She can't. She can't handle this she chow can't chow. It's a monster. My <laughs> yum yum. My little, little Hiroshi. He's not little anymore. Oh, he's still a little boy. He's huge. He's still a little boy. And dog is eight months old and weighs almost 40 four pounds. Four months. He's four months. Four months old, weighs almost... He's like 10 pounds per month, okay? Mm, uh, yeah, like two and a <laughs> half to three pounds a week. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. he's, he's awesome. We have a question coming in from Kayla. She's Certainly. Typing it out. How you doing, Kayla? Hi, Kayla. I think one night I'm. I think next week I'm going to actually do kind of a, a little seminar for you all uh, to start. Uh, we begin in the last segment of uh, Ask the Unicorn, the Way of the Unicorn, with me giving you subjects, and I think I'm going to start doing that with you all again. You have some good questions yeah, about question. certain things. We have a question from Karen. Karen. Mm -hmm. She says, Karen Rideout says, something happened to me yesterday. I was quite stressed. I took a shower and while in a shower, I heard three loud knocks on the side of my house. When I got out, no tracks near the, there were no tracks near the house or the window. Then I heard two songs back to back on the radio in reference to God. Coincidence, she no, asks. never a coincidence. Never a coincidence. Um, the three knocks was someone obviously trying to communicate, you know, and you did the right thing by investigating. And uh, the two songs, I'd like to know what they were, if you can remember. Uh, the, what, and if you can remember at all what was being sung during the songs, like was there a sentence that was being sung or in both of the songs? That significant. This is how you listen to things. This is how you, you learn to read signs, okay? There's two knocks, there's three knocks. Two knocks, you just leave it. Three knocks, it's okay to answer. Um, the words of a song that you hear, pay attention to the words of the song, because it's, it's pretty much the same in reading scriptures, you know? You, if you hear a scripture, pay attention to what's being read. It may have something to do with you. It may apply somewhere. So. If you can remember the words that were being sung, or even what the name of the song was, that would be extremely helpful. And then I could tell you exactly what was being said to you. Because there's no coincidence that you would hear, okay, here I am, and then all of a sudden you hear these two songs. That's called order, or synchronicity, whatever they like to call it. You know, kismet. You know, it works all the same. Uh, Karen says, one was the Carrie Underwood song, Something in the Water. The words are something like, God rescue me, and the other was Blake Shelton, God gave me you. Hmm. I can look up the lyrics. 
No, that's okay. okay. Something in the water, and God gave me you. Oh, oh, oh! Part of your healing will have to do with water. Okay? And it will have to be understanding the vibration of water and how water can change to cause healing. Yes. Okay. That's actually what the song is about. Something in the water. Oh, well, so we go. Part says, so I followed the preacher man down to the river and now I'm changed and now I'm stronger. There must have been something in the water. Oh, there must have been something in the water. Yeah. Well, that's just a matter of fact. You know, it would have to do with water. Boy, that would actually be quite the project, wouldn't it? Perhaps after your surgery and your recovering, you could come and see me and I can do some things with water and we'll find out. No, it's okay. I'm not looking for the popularity. That's not no, the point. No, I'm looking at the lyrics yeah. because I'm nosy and I want to know. Well, you'll have to do that later. Okay, so I'll be willing to help you out there. And I'll actually check into some things. You know, years ago, actually, there was a person that came to see me. His name was Lawrence McAllister, and he was once with the Atomic Energy Commission. I used to do a, a, and I used to do this quite frequently, I, I wrote a whole thing on uh, vibrational frequency and how you can use vibrational frequency in order to molecularly change the structure of one thing to another. And I wrote a whole dissertation on it. Well, he came to see me, just out of the blue, and he says, it, he told me who he was with at the time, and I said, the Atomic Energy Commission, really? And uh, this guy was 76 years old. and he, had more energy than me, and he uh, he told me that he read some of my writings and that my writings were above the curve. And I I went, okay, really seriously? You did the Atomic Energy Commission, and you, you guys have all that neat stuff. And uh, all I have is a couple of speakers and a keyboard, and you know some knowledge, and I can actually outdo you. He was looking for information that they did not have, that I had. And uh, basically I created a sound curtain. Any, anyway, uh, I knew how to do things with vibrational frequency to change something from one form to another. And uh, he was working with water. And uh, he was creating what he called benefit water. And basically what he was doing was creating heavy water. Uh, what we now call deuterium. deuterium. This is dual celled water. And um, I, I knew by what he was, he didn't say that, but I knew what he was doing, you know, just by his explanation. I said, I know what you're doing. He says, what? I said, you're making heavy water. He went, how'd you know? <laughs> and he said, because you're trying to transform the water and infuse it with something. See, water is one of those things that, that uh, it will take whatever shape you put it in. But not only will it take the shape, it will also take the energy and transform itself into the energy of anything that you introduce to it. You can take one memory from water and replace it with another memory. And that can even happen in our bodies, do you understand? In other words, you can take the water that is in your body, and if you can extract a thought or a memory from it, and then replace it with another thought, and cause that to spread all over you, then you could actually effectively heal yourself and, and change yourself. This is the truth, okay? I think what the universe is telling you is that part of your healing will have to do with water and that if you really get into it, you will be able to change everything. Your whole body is 97% water. That makes perfect sense. But if you don't know that, then you can't really infuse it. You can't use that knowledge to change yourself and infuse yourself. 
With vibrational frequency, I can basically, with sound, which is very akin to water, sound, I can recreate you up to five times in sound and surround you with it. And my, my theory is that it could cure anything. That's the way that I see it. I've proven that on small scales. But uh, the point is, is that they're trying to tell you that water will be part of your solution. And I really, I really believe that. It'd be great to know what it was that you, what stanza of the song that you were hearing. Sorry, you got me in this mad scientist mode, and I'm like that. So. Uh, yeah, we have a few more questions. What do you got? Karen says, I would love that. Sure. And we have a question from Kayla. She says, I am asking for my friend Lisa. She's seen shadows and people and has been told she's crazy because of the things she sees watching that aren't there to anyone else. She's drawn to certain places considered haunted. It's not unusual. Yes. Well, you know, whoever's telling her she's crazy is not really seeing themselves. You know. She shouldn't hang out with them. Yeah, you probably sh yeah, she probably shouldn't hang out with those people that are calling her crazy. I see things all every day, all day. <laughs> I'm anything but crazy. Okay, so you know I might be a little strange, but I'm not crazy. So just change your circle. And you see things too, so you guys need to kind of support each other. We have another question. The main thing is these things do exist. Okay, what else do we got? From Little Stardust 777. Okay. She asks, it's long, I guess. Yeah. Hi guys, what can you say about the various ET transdimensional beings, for example, Pleiadians, Reptilians, Pleiadians, Reptilians, Syrian, wait, is that, did I say Syrian. that? Syrian, that's Syrians, correct. And those, and, and whose interests do they serve? Their own. They serve their own interests, but part of their interests are different from ours because most of these beings look for a unified and harmonious universe. Do you understand? Like, uh, let's take uh, Pleiadians. Pleiadians are more about knowledge. Syrians are more about knowledge and wisdom. Uh, reptilians are more what we call reptilians. They do not call themselves that, but we call them reptilians. They're about um, advancement. And actually, they're quite well at, quite good at uh, using rudimentary elements to do things. Like once, uh, years ago, I had a, an episode with uh, one of them, and it was a, a visionary episode. And I had something that they were looking for, but I, I, had, <laughs> I had a piece of it at least, because it was given to me by one of them. And it's a long story. but. Um, uh, they understand how malleable or mutable this earth is. These species do exist. They may not call themselves what we call them, but they do in fact exist. You have to understand, this is a gigantic universe. It's a magnificently huge galaxy or an, and, uh, even the just the solar system is is phenomenally big with all of these planets they have different people that are on them and some of them are interdimensional which basically means that they've been here far longer than we are we're basically a very new species whether we believe it or not we're kind of new that's probably why we're so dumb we're very very new and from time to time, they do lend us a hand. They try to help us. I'm sure that there are good and bad to each one of these species, just like there's good and bad here to us simple humans. But uh, I think that by now, we know that they've been here. We know that they are here, and we know that they coexist with us. And anyone who doesn't believe that, or anyone who does can't see that, has seriously got their head in the sand. 
as to whether or not they're here to be good or evil, that left that's left to be seen. That remains to be seen. They exist. You can catch them from time to time. Which ones are you particularly interested in? Oh. Let me know. Along those lines, Kayla asks a question. She says um, she'd love to hear more about Orion if time allows. Orion. Uh, about Orion or those that come from Orion? Uh, all she says is about Orion, I'm sure. Well, find out. Yeah, we talked about that uh, in the session when she was here. Oh, okay. yeah. Like I told you, you want to learn about Orion and all that there is about Orion, you'll have to take the classes. I told you that. <laughs> nice try. Uh, we have a question from Elise. Mm -hmm. She says, I see fairies in our apartment and our cats chase them. Why are they here? To help. They like your, they like your house. That's yeah. good. <laughs> That's a good thing. <laughs> Sometimes they're there if you happen to have plants. Live plants. And they're actually caretakers. But uh, I'll give you this piece of advice. Don't have any fake plants in your home. That doesn't make them very happy. If you're gonna have a plant, make sure it's real. It's almost an insult to keep a fake plant. At least to the elemental kingdom. Okay. Anything else? No. <clears throat> all right, I've told you all that uh, uh, if you'd like to take classes from me, you know where to reach me, www.unicorn-code.com, www.asktheunicorn.com. Mm -hmm. I'll be more than happy to teach you. Uh, when you have your questions, please write them down. You know, if there's some things that I've spoken to you about that you know are broad questions, um, I'll try to answer them for you, but you try to make them specific, okay? Like, uh, if you're asking about different species of extraterrestrials, or, or what we call extraterrestrials, um, which one do you want to know about? She wrote in Syrians. Syrians? Really? Huh. I like Syrians. <laughs> I don't know which ones they are. Uh, Syrians are probably some of the oldest, actually. And uh, they are good at interdimensional travel. Not only interdimensional travel, but they have everything from memory and futuristic. They're kind of like the epitome of, of understanding how things started and how they will go. And a uh, very big race of people. Um, if I had to put them in a humaniform type of thing, I would say that they're they're strongly built, um, larger heads. Okay. Appendages that tend to look like braids, but not. Braids? Necessarily, they kind of look like braids. Yes. Like if you're talking about a physical characteristic, um, very patient, very very patient, and very very grounded. Syrians are very knowledgeable about the workings of the stars, about the workings and why things happen. It, it's like if you could have a library of knowledge, that library that contained every bit of knowledge that there is and they're constantly having that now. Okay, okay. I don't know if you ever read comic books, comic books at all, but uh, there was a and uh, Marvel comics of one that was called the Watcher and this Watcher observed every single thing and had the knowledge of the entire workings of the universe those would be the Syrians okay, oh, okay. I see. 
like ultra patient, you know, just doesn't need to get involved with anything, is not really concerned with the person's triflings, you know what I mean? But they handle their business. And uh, yeah, are there Syrians here from time to time? Yes. So who is that? The Egyptian? The yes, big, yes. Depictions are of? Yes, with the... With the big head. Yes. And the what? The what? Nothing. The what? Shut up. Whoop, whoop, whoop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, Syrians. Very old. Very old. It's ancient. They're all more ancient than we are, but the Syrians <laughs> are more ancient, ancient. Yeah, the Syrians are awesome, and they have very big societies too, huge societies. You sh you would do well to investigate more about the Syrians. What time have we got here? Nine o two. Okay. Any other questions? Uh. Yeah. Oh, Kayla says she asked about the Galactic Federation in quotes. The Intergalactic Confederation, that is a federation of all of the universes. Different suns. And it is real. You, do you know that our governmental structure was actually formed based upon the IGC? Our whole government, well, it was supposed to be like the IGC. In other words, we were supposed to, America was supposed to be the, the center point, center point of all things, just like the Intergalactic Confederation. But of course, there's humans involved <laughs> and other stuff, and we took something that was supposed to be absolutely beautiful and turned it into something that it's questionable. There's still some good people there, but uh, for the most part, we did not follow the model of plan. The IGC is the in exactly what it calls itself, the Intergalactic Confederation, the con Intergalactic Confederation of all universes or planets, or including three different suns. See, our universe is only one part of a greater whole. It's just like one verse in the song, or one one line in the song. And I don't mean to make it seem small, because that's not small in any way, shape, or form. Even our solar system is enough to entertain a person for about a thousand lifetimes, maybe more than a thousand lifetimes, before you start going to the next solar system, before you can make it even to the magnitude of the galaxy and even the universe. You could spend a billion lifetimes and not even get close to the full magnitude of things. Well, the IGC is bigger than that. And you know, we as Earthlings, we like to believe that we are so important, like we're this center of the universe. That's not true. Our structure was based upon theirs. In other words, they, with the hopes they hope that we could do things right. We keep screwing things up. Hopefully we'll get it right. You know, generation after generation comes and hopefully we do a little better, a little better, a little better. This is why I keep saying you got to stop, you know, entertaining things like racism and sexism and, and bullying and, you know, murder and pillaging and de devising each other and finding ways to defeat each other. That's not meeting with anybody's approval in the IGC. Not at all. Time and time again, agents have been sent here to help us out. To try to get us to see beyond our own noses. And we're kind of dumb. We do things like stone them, crucify them, bury them, burn them, find ways to cause them trouble. So, 
IGC, Intergalactic Confederation, Federation of All Universes, Federation of All Beings. And we are included in that. Now, <clears throat> am I telling you that? Hopefully that helps you in some way, shape, or form. It's huge to even try to think about. But it is, in fact, the truth. There are all kinds of beings. All kinds of beings. Beings that, you know, we, if you look at our movies, we always draw things in a humaniform type of a thing. You know, they've got eyes, nose, mouth. They don't all look like that. They don't all look like us. In fact, very few of them actually look like us. Okay? Or even built like us. Or even speak like us. <laughs> but in our puny understanding, we like to translate everything, you know, to look like us in some way, shape, or form. Because otherwise we freak out. Yeah, otherwise we'd have to see that no one species on this earth is supposed to be in control of any other species. <coughs> and that's scary for people. All right, uh, Michelle Ayat says, thank you once again, and if I can hear you say I'm safe, I'll be good. You are safe. If you weren't, I'd tell you. Yes. And this little Stardust 777 says, thank you very much. Love listening to the show when I can. Awesome. That is Glad to have you. That is it. All right, I'd like to thank you all for joining us this evening and Ask the Unicorn. If you have any questions, please write them down. Tell your friends about the show. The more people that we have watching the show, the better and more we can do it. Okay? Uh, I'd like to have you all join us again next week. And remember, please check out um, the uh, Daily Bread Low Sodium Bakery uh, campaign on Indiegogo. And uh, tell everybody about it. Tell everybody about it. And push them to go and make a donation. Also, <coughs> you can reach us at www.askthelunicorn.com or www.unicorn-cove.com. And uh, if you have any concern, you'd like to take classes or uh, you need a reading or spiritual counseling, you can be reached, we can be reached and we only do this by appointment only. You can reach us at uh, area code 207-347-5686. Once again, that's area code 207-347-5686. I'm Uhuru Zidaliza. This is my trusty sidekick, Kazi. And uh, we look forward to seeing you all next week on Ask the Unicorn. Until then, have a wonderful evening. Please, be positive and hang in there. Better things are coming. Unicorn out. <laughs>